Wow World, Frida Riva Darcy, and Patricia O'Connor. And today on the balcony, I can't help but feel like this is going to be a sort of a pretty important, a pretty important when it comes to our pine work and stuff. This is going to be a pretty important video. I um, worked late last night on Simply P and then I got up this morning and uh, worked quite a bit more on that tree. Oh, it's the uh, 2nd of July. The pool is busting out. It almost looks like the beach scene in Jaws. It's just like everybody's having a big time out there. Our trees are um, occupying their space on the balcony and looking pretty good. Without further ado, the most humblest of trees for me has been the greatest of teachers. This is Simply P pulled back. Um, you know, pulled back. And what I did was something that I should have been doing for years that had never been done to this tree as far as I know. And that was actual bud selection. Um, I don't think I'm the only one who suffers from this, but pine trees are intimidating. I, th I think I've, I've heard other people in uh, chat during, uh, during premieres and stuff talk about some uh, certain aspects of uh, bonsai being intimidating. And I've always found that the things that the pros know to do and do with such confidence to be a little intimidating. So when I got this tree, it had limbs like this by about a dozen on one and two places, places here. It had limbs like this by the dozen, one or two places here. This branch came out and then there was another, there was another little upturn like this with about another dozen branches. And all of those had numerous buds. And every year, you're supposed to go through and do bud selection. And bud selection sounds, sounds very inclusive. We're selecting buds, which is also to say we're denying buds. We're cutting the ones that don't make the show. And failure to do that will cause the branches to just have clusters of buds and buds and buds on the end until you can't really see where one bud starts and another bud ends. Last night I was going through here and I was trying to do a proper candle cut, but it got hard to see in the weeds, so to speak. And also we had kind of lost where where the um, branch lines are because we've just got this huge pom-pom that's um, buds packed on top of buds and when you so the first thing I did was I didn't know where to start but I did know that intimidation had caused had uh, meant that I had never gone through and selected buds on this tree even when I uh, went through and did candle cutting last year and even when I did do uh, some needle thinning last year I still hadn't gotten over um, the intimidation of learning all the different aspects of Japanese black pine and it's 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 kind of funny it's like there's certain things that you're supposed to learn with Japanese black pines one you're supposed to know you know when to do the candle and you're supposed to know when to do the fertilizer and you're supposed to know um, when to thin the needles and how to thin the needles and you're supposed to know uh, in a cluster of buds how many to keep and which ones they are and so with all of that to learn the first thing I noticed is that my trees were yellow so um, I was kind of like found the um, part where people were cutting parts off of their trees a little bit intimidating 
because I didn't have one yet that I thought could survive such an ordeal. I didn't know but for what they were going to die because it's within a month of me having them, they would look, they would start to look yellow. And that was typically because uh, I had a little bit to learn about getting, uh, getting watering down Pat or down Patricia, I guess, in this aspect. So throwing my um, Japanese black pine lessons, um, throwing those lessons on how to do decandling and all that other proper little maintenance stuff on the back burner, I tried to focus on keeping them alive and try to focus on the horticulture end of it. And that almost sounds like a, um, I almost make that sound like a, uh, a decision was made to do that. It wasn't. I was just intimidated by what I didn't know. And uh, I was just taking on what I did know in little bits. And frankly, the intimidation kind of caused me to go through my lessons a little slower than, than what was necessary. I didn't, have to, I didn't have to jump off and take such little bites. But last night, I uh, decided that I wasn't doing this little tree any favors by allowing clusters of buds to come out here in the bottom, to pull out of the bottom and just turn that into a huge club. And for all of the times that you've seen Simply P and seen that it just had those huge Buffon circular um, outpouring of really healthy looking needles. And that's what I got out of that. I got a good indication that the tree was green and healthy and was pushing forth a lot of new growth. And I was also, to be honest, a little cool with the fact that all of that growth was covering up the fact that I wasn't doing proper bonsai because it intimidated me. So at some point, Simply P uh, taught me a little bit about wiring and how much I could get away with bending things. And um, I'm still learning about wiring and wire scars and how much and how things will come to even out. And um, I've also learned about chopping things. And, I've, and I um, have practiced what I have learned about fanning out the roots and trying to develop big roots. And I had already learned about candle cutting, although it was so hard to see where the candles were. I found myself giving up on candle cutting early, probably only having done a third of them. And then once you start doing a little bit of bud selection, you start seeing all the candles that you were missing, kind of like cleaning up the weeds and picking out certain things that you wanted to get out of your garden. Um, and that's kind of where that's brought us. This most humblest of trees is kind of I've broken through. And I wasn't doing this tree any favors by allowing those buds to pile on top of buds on top of buds. That will disfigure the tree. That will um, cause the end of the branches to grow large club-like features that uh, are not necessarily sightly. And while that was intimidating, also last year, I got kind of frozen my tracks over uh, some health issues that a few of my trees had that were brought on. And the feeling was is that those health issues were brought on by what I didn't know. And, and, and so that kind of just makes you want to go, well, let's get a handle on, on what's going on. And so I didn't do that, that kind of freeze in your tracks moment didn't add to my um to my willingness to go jumping into my 17 year with seed when i purchased this tree it was actually on the bench having its needles reduced uh and getting set up for uh, having already had its uh candles cut and its needles reduced i mean like i took the tree home within hours of that just having been done and was told to leave it out of the sun for a day or so and, and then and then reintroduce it and it's like what do i do now to this tree nothing we've just done the candles and we've just uh done the energy so last year when it came time to do the candles and thin the needles 
and select the buds. I did the candles. I thinned the needles. I selected zero in the way of buds because I kind of froze in my growth because of the problems that I'd had in, with that tree. And one of the things that I discovered that I'd done wrong with that tree was I decandled it two years in a row and you're not supposed to decandle a Japanese cork bark black pine, especially an older one two years in a row. I'm lucky I didn't kill that tree. Also, I'll let the water, uh, I'll let the water from the drip tray get up to the bottom of the pot, kill the roots at the bottom of the pot, which clogs the pot, which almost killed all the rest of the roots. So an emergency repot there actually probably probably went a long way towards pulling that tree out. So what I still have to do to that, my 75, my 75 year old, uh, is do a needle reduction. And I am going to do a little bit of bud selection on this, but that would basically do the same thing. That would basically do the same thing energy wise as a uh, candle cutting and I'm and I'm doubly sure not going to cut the damn candles this year after what we went through last year with that tree. So that brings us back to this one. Last year I should have done the uh, bud selection with that tree but I kind of froze in place and it is a great time to get caught up on that. Uh, I don't think um, I think if I just go in there and do it it'll be fine. That would be a long video, so no, I'm not going to put you through that. I'm just going to show you I'm all set up and ready to go. And this is going to be probably what I'll do on my um, Sunday afternoon while the kids are, are enjoying the pool. I'm going to use my little table as a, as a stool, and I'm using my bench as a bench. I like being able to raise that up higher. It helps me to be able to see the work I'm doing. Um, one thing, while we're at it, you can see on this tree... There are needles that are longer. There are ones that are noticeably longer on there. Now, when we thin out needles, those are descended needles. Those needles are out because sometimes if you were to grab a needle, you would pull on it and see that it pulls back. Not these. These long needles, these are the ones, these are the ones that go easy. They've already They've already let go, and later on in the year, a lot of those guys will start to yellow. They've already kind of released in their jackets somewhat. So when it comes to what to remove, that's, that's an easy one. We're not even counting needles at that point. We're just kind of removing. Also, don't remove all of them get rid of you can get rid of uh on a healthy tree you can get rid of most these guys do hold different needles hold different hormones at different times for different reasons so i think it's a good rule to never get rid of all of any year needles not your first not your second not your third until i know otherwise i would leave a few at least a few of uh all of those so that's the next time you see that guy, I will have uh, gone to town and done the candles and uh, selected the buds and selected the buds a little more because I didn't last year. Uh, the year before that was done for me on the day I bought it. So that leaves me to make up for last year. If I did anything wrong, this is about what... This is about what Sweet Pea should look like at this stage of the game. If I'm worried about anything, it's that to get it to look like what it should look like at this stage in the game, you know, after after having bud selection, um, after all of these years, means that I took off a massive amount of buds and I am worried about taking off that many buds at one time. Otherwise, I basically made up for the last, I don't know, eight years of nobody selecting buds on this tree and made up for it last night and this morning. We will let the tree recover 
and we'll let it come back from there. And then from then on, we will worry more about structure and start trying to put a little bit of emphasis on what we really want these guys to be shaped like. In the early going, I knew that I wanted motion in them. I didn't know what motion. I couldn't see it, still can't. Um, yeah, but that's that's it. I could also probably start doing some work on on this little chop here. Maybe uh, could also do some do some carving on that. We could do some work on parts of this tree. So we could maybe turn some of these scars into shari's or uh yeah shari's which are little exposed parts of the bark so that it looks like where or something or where the tree was doing a spiral and you know the, maybe the bark split or something it's kind of a neat feature that sometimes people do whenever they've got a line line in a tree but anyway that is a quick look at simply p I have kind of moved on from my um, bud selection phobia. This, the most humblest of trees, has taught me has taught me more about um, how to take care of Japanese black pines, and my more snooty, dare I say, prized pines will uh, will certainly be better off for it. I'm going to move right along to this one, and then we'll go to that one. So that's pretty much our Sunday drop. That's me admitting to my own Japanese black pine phobia. They, uh, they sure are beautiful. And when you see somebody with a beautiful black pine and they just kind of, you know, they stand there next to it and, and you know that everything that's happened to that tree was done by them, that's just, I totally get that. I totally get that. But I have to move through all of these little stages and it's lights out. And as, uh, and as our trees, if we don't move through the stages that we need to move through as bonsai, then our trees in the end become those things we don't want them, become those things that we don't want them to become. They become unkept a little at a time. Um, so, yeah, it feels good to kind of get that out of the way and to feel like I've done better by Sweet Pea. And I'm ready for to let that tree just bounce right back and show us good stuff. And then the rest of the afternoon, I'm gonna pull up my cup of coffee and start working on this guy. I feel better about what I'm going to do to this tree because uh, it will be easier than that one. And it should look better afterwards because it was not an unkept tree. I probably, yeah, I did need to select candles. I mean, I did need to select both last year, but I can make up for that this year without it. Uh, we're not gonna have big, huge clusters of, of knots or fists at the end of branches the way I did on the one that had never been done. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. We'll probably do something tonight on, on the on that same bench we'll probably drag our bench back inside and maybe do a little something else tonight we can drop that midweek uh, i hope you're having a good holiday i think it sounds like everybody at the pool is so far frida and i are enjoying ours and um thank you so much for watching